So I want to show you how I make my sourdough so that you are more set up for success to whip up your own loaf, feel a little more confident. Um, I've been doing this for, let's see, since February of 2020. So well over three years now going strong and the more you do it, all I can say is the more you do it, the easier it becomes, um, the more second nature and the more flexible you can be where you can try different time intervals you can start at different times of the day i was very rigid in doing it mostly in the evenings uh, after i cleaned up dinner or while i was prepping dinner um, and then sometimes it wouldn't be until eight o'clock maybe i'd whip one up or maybe i would whip one up at 6 a.m and i would still bake it that same day and i was super excited that i fit it all in one day um, i didn't have to do an overnight rise sometimes i've cut the the rising time shorter um, in the summer months when it's just warmer in general. Um, so, you know, play around with it. You learn from your mistakes and it's a loaf of bread, flour, water, and salt, and your starter. So not expensive ingredients. If you gotta cut it up into croutons or make some French toast out of a dud loaf, um, it's not the end of the world. Or you can toss it. Um, you know, it's not, it's not expensive ingredients here. So we're all about, you know, learning and growing. And I want to give you guys some resources and tools to be able to be on your way with, with making that. So, um, these are things that I have acquired and would highly, highly encourage you. Most recipes out there that you're going to find are going to speak in grams. Okay. So that's where a digital food scale will come into play. This is from Costco. It's a bigger one. I also have a smaller one that I started with. I think I got this from Target. Um, Taylor is a very, oh, this is Taylor too. This is just a smaller one. You can see the difference in size. Um, 20 bucks, I don't know, or get one wherever you shop. Um, it's worth investing in. I've used it countless other times for so many other things. I can't, um, can't even tell you. So um, get yourself a food scale because we are going to weigh things. And um, a, a big bowl with a lid. You're gonna want a big bowl so that it has room to grow, okay? Uh, and this is just the method. I have trialed and aired so many things. There's so many recipes, so many different styles and methods out there. This is just what I've been doing, what I found, what I glommed onto from someone I followed um, and how it's worked super well for me. And um, yeah, we're just gonna roll with it. So I put my bowl onto my scale and then I'm gonna turn it on. And you wanna make sure that it always says zero in the beginning. You're not gonna be able to see my scale, zero grams. If you're not seeing zero, just hit the word tear and that will always bring you back to zero on your food scale. So first things you're gonna start with are your water and your starter. So lukewarm water, 425 grams is the recipe that I follow. Uh, and if you have, talked with me or follow my blog or if that you bought things from me um, I have shared with you this recipe and that's just the one that I'm going to share today 425 grams is about two cups of water so I always fill up a measuring cup to two cups um, oops and dump it in you can be so flexible if you're plus or minus a few grams like it is really not the end of the world it is totally just of general um, guidance Ooh, I got a little bit too much okay a bit more out and when I ask my son to do this he's like mom that doesn't say 425 it's 423 okay there we go 425 got my water in I'm gonna hit tear again it's gonna zero it out okay now we're doing the starter okay so this is my starter Oakley hopefully it's in your kitchen too mm, I love that smell okay now you're gonna add 200 grams of starter. Um, so make sure you've hit tear on your on your scale. And I'm gonna dump it out, I'm just gonna dump it out. If it's floating, that means it's super active and really ready to rock and roll. This one has been sitting a little while, um, but for the purposes of this video, I just pulled it out to, to show you guys how to make a loaf, but it should still make me a good loaf. Um, all right, so 200 grams, all right. Don't be afraid to get messy either. Just flour and water. All right, 200 grams. And then you can use your hands, you can use a whisk, you can use whatever. This is just a dough whisk that I've acquired over time. And you're just gonna mix that up. 
You can tell this is my acetylene bowl because I don't really clean it out as often because it's just the same thing being made over and over. All right, so you're gonna whisk it up until it looks like milk, okay? If you can see any of that before, I, I'm gonna spill it on the ground. <laughs> it's just gonna look like milk, okay? All right, then you're gonna tear it again. Tear, tear, tear. Always make sure it says zero and then it's on a flat surface. I've had it where I'm like, why is this consistency feel so off? Um, and little did I know the scale was like resting on a crumb or whatever, and it was just uneven. So just make sure it's you know flat as can be. All right, um, you can use scoopers. I just just dump. So I fill up this thing. Organic, unbleached, key, unbleached flour. I buy mine from Costco. You can get it. Um, I get it through Azure, um, a, uh, like a bulk ordering site. Um, you can order, you can find it at, I mean, any store really. King Arthur is a really good brand. So just make sure that it is unbleached and preferably organic, especially when feeding your starter, okay? Uh, so we are dumping in 650 grams of flour. So I just dump and I'll scoop. I don't like the dirty things because I have this awesome scale. I can just dump and measure. All right, that was too much. I do always keep, like if you have like a protein powder or any fun thing that you buy that comes with a scooper, I save my scoopers for things like this because I feed my starter right out of here from this big container and so I just keep a scooper in there. Comes in handy. Okay, so I'm at 650. Now I have played around with other flowers and you can too. Some people will do a couple different flowers or two different kinds and that was really intimidating to me but then I was like it's just flour um, and you just make it still about the equal um, weight ratio or the equal weight in grams. So I've done half white flour and half einkorn flour. Um, I have links to that in my blog on my on my website and stuff. So and it has worked out wonderful. Um, sometimes you just have to do a little less water. It depends on the kind of flour you're using. Um, some soak up water faster, slower, all different kinds of things. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna add in our salt. I added in right away 20 grams or a full tablespoon is what you're going to add right in there okay then you're gonna whip it up whip it whip it use your hands use a spatula I have my dough whisk I'm just gonna pop it off the scale I like to just really because it's gonna get they call it like a shaggy ball okay so you're gonna get some nice toned shoulders from with mixing up all your sourdough loaves that's how I stay fit just kidding gonna get it all together it is an arm workout so it's starting to come together in this nice shaggy ball. Okay, don't worry. It will eventually start to um, absorb more of that water. So it's gonna look kind of dry in the, in the start and that's okay. Just make sure you get most of that flour incorporated into it. Okay. And your dough will be sticky, totally fine. And so from here, some people like to be hands-on with their dough. It's very therapeutic. Um, they just like to, yeah, do that. And I found that I actually really do enjoy that if I have the time. So people will stretch and fold. So about every 20 to 30 minutes, I'll set a timer. Sometimes it's been longer because I forgot or kids, you know. And you will come and you will stretch and fold this two to four times every 20 to 30 minutes, okay? Whatever you have time for. Sometimes I've only gotten two folds in, fine. And what does that do? So it helps develop the gluten in here, um, you know, make your bread nice and buoyant, so like a good spring to it. You want a nice, you know, a good rise. You want a good rise. It's gonna incorporate air, get that gluten going, and then um, it's gonna help create those air pockets. You see those beautiful air pockets in sourdough? It's gonna help with that. So you'll see when you come back after the first fold, how much gluten, of, you know, how much of it has developed um, and that it looks smoother and it's more um, taut. So um, I will show you on here how I do that, just for time purposes sake, pretend it has sat for 20 minutes. 
you're gonna come here. You're gonna come and grab one end. You can wet your hands. I'm gonna wet my hands actually. I just get my hand wet. You're gonna pull one end. So it's just four sides, think four turns. You're gonna pull up, fold it over onto itself. All right, turn my bowl. Pull up, so I kind of yank it. Pull up, fold it over onto itself, completely to the other side. And now I turn the bowl again, third side. Pull up, fold it over onto itself. <laughs> I'm watching the camera and not my bowl. <clears throat> then the fourth side, pull up, fold it all the way over, and then I just kind of do that, doop doop doop. And then you're gonna find a cover, cover it up, and you're gonna let this sit at room temp for eight to 12 hours. Now, if you want more of a fridge ferment, you can let this sit for six to eight hours and then you're gonna dump it out, you're gonna shape it, put it into a banditin basket or a flowered um, bowl with, a, with like a flower sack towel or something. Um, you can just use a, a light towel, flower, flower it um, and put your loaf in there and you can pop it in the fridge for however much longer you need to. What you don't want is for it to overproof. So if you're letting it sit at room temperature for too long, it will get to its peak rising. And if you've lost that, it's not gonna bake as high as you would want it to um, because it did all that work in here. So it's creating a fermentation. It's breaking down the gluten. It's eating off of the sugar and the gluten um, and creating a natural gas, the carbon dioxide. I think that's the right word. Forgive me if I use the wrong word, but a natural gas. <laughs> it's not carbon monoxide. I know that. Um, and it will create that rise. There's naturally occurring yeast. We didn't use any yeast in here. There's naturally occurring yeast in flour already. And so it's going to feed off of the sugar and the gluten, which makes it a much lower gluten content. This is not 100% gluten-free. It is very gluten-free, I will say. Um, most gluten intolerant people um, can handle eating sourdough. If you have celiac, um, I would say no. <laughs> um, that is not something that you're going to be able to consume, unfortunately. Um, but many people that I have met and in my family are like, wow, I can eat your sourdough and feel just fine. So I love that. And that's why I love being able to also, you know, share this with people. So I hope this helps. Again, cover it with a lid. I pop it up on top of my fridge, um, the warmest place in my home. You can set it near your oven uh, and then let it do its rise. And then when you're ready, you will take it out onto a floured surface. I use brown rice flour. And there will be another video on that of how I shape it. And I put it in a basket and I let it proof for about another hour before I warm up my oven to bake it. So hope this was helpful. Any questions, you know how to get in touch with me.